Timothy McSweeney's Quarterly Concern, issue 26. Issue 26 was originally sold in shrink wrap, and there are three pieces to issue 26. One is a hardcover, Where to Invade Next, and there are cover variants. This is the dark blue cover, still in the original shrink wrap, the dark blue cover for the hardcover, Where to Invade Next. There's also a gray cover. There may be a white cover variant. Most of these, it's a fairly common title. Very few people that sell these take a picture of what they're selling. They just grab a stock image, a stock graphic, what have you. So most of the people selling these, they have no information to go with them. There is a graphic out there of a white cover variant. You see it all the time. Uh, you're not getting a white cover, you're getting the dark blue or the gray, but that white graphic is out there. I've never seen the white cover. Never seen a actual photograph of the white cover. Do not know anyone that owns the white cover or can state that they have seen the white cover. It could be that they intended it, they had the cover art already, the graphics, and the white cover didn't happen. Don't know. Very hard for me to ask McSweeney's questions. I don't have the contacts in McSweeney's that I need to find out these detail kind of things and there are very few people that I can ask because if I don't know which not to toot my own horn but if I don't know the answer <laughs> there's not many people I can turn to to find out things like this so issue 26 one piece is the hardcover where to invade next edited by Stephen Elliott the dark blue is pretty sharp. I like I like this cover. Also one of their better hard covers as far as durability. McSweeney's covers, <laughs> some of them not so good. This cover stands up pretty well to shelf wear. And the gray cover, which I don't like so much. If anybody has seen, has, has seen a picture knows anything about the possibility of a white cover variant definitely would like to know about that send me an email now the other pieces of issue 26 are two paperback volumes and these two paperbacks are designed to look like the World War II armed services editions of books that were printed to be sent to soldiers around the world. The Armed Services Editions, they printed a, something under 125 million copies. 125 million copies. There were about 1,300 titles. The they reprinted some of the titles and the reprints are included in the numbering scheme. I won't go too much into the numbering scheme. It's kind of elaborate. You got to know quite a few things. Um, but the numbering scheme, the reprints were included in the numbering. So the 1300 and 24 or something like that. 1300 titles. If you take out the reprints, that would probably knock it down to 1150, 1200, 11, call it 1150. I, I, specialist in the armed services editions would know all of this stuff. I'm somewhat familiar with them. 
so that would cut down the titles about 1300 minus reprints so the armed services editions many of them were in an oblong format like these two uh, people that are familiar with these that's pretty much what they think of automatically they were also printed in kind of what is a standard paperback format um, but the ones best known are these oblong ones and there's no shortage of the others if you want to collect one they're not that hard to find so let's kind of change things up here So there we have McSweeney's take. The back cover of this one is a promo for Arkansas or Arkansas. Uh, John Brandon, uh, the Quarterly Concern. Uh, they often promote an upcoming title. Uh, it's a good way to collect if you're really interested in the quarterly concern and you kind of want to expand your collection from the quarterly concern. You can start collecting books of what they promoted in the quarterly concern. They have done a bunch of special inserts. Um, so it's a good way to go to add to your collection is to pick up books that have been promoted in the concern. So Arkansas for for that. This copy happens to be signed by Dave Eggers. So this is not just uh, it's a very good representation of the armed services edition uh, right down to all of the cover formatting I have here an actual armed services edition and I bought this one specifically because it's very close in design to what McSweeney's did for issue 26. It's got the red field, the blue, little blue graphic here, and the black bar on the bottom. So very close. The McSweeney's is just a little bit taller a little bit longer but the format is just wonderfully close and this is the this is the real thing here and the armed services editions they printed in black and white half tone the covers of the actual books all of the armed services edition have the black and white graphic as part of the design of of all of the covers and they have a variety of color palettes um, the other I'll show it in a minute the other one the color palette for that actually used now this one has and the only big difference if you will between the McSweeney's uh, take on the armed services edition and the real thing all the text on this cover here this is all in black text that is not usual the real armed services editions tended to have mostly mostly white now this one has a novel by in black and some of them have more black like the title and the author's name might be in black or this little blurb here about the overseas edition this blurb might be in black but the real thing in this red blue black the text in the real thing is mostly 
white. And when they used black, it wasn't uh, it wasn't a hundred percent black like on this one. So that's a fairly nitpicky difference, but you know that's that's why we collect books, right? To, to satisfy our nitpicking urges. So this is pretty cool. I got this specifically because it's pretty close to this. And this one, th this is uh, staple bound. Got a a nice heavy duty staple here. Staple bound. They're all staple bound. Some of them were stapled through through and through through the cover. They would glue the cover on, and then it would be stapled. Uh, not common, I don't believe. I have seen a number of examples where clearly the staple came after the cover went on. But I have, I have not bought one. I have resisted getting into Armed Services Edition. There would be no end to that rabbit hole. Um... But this, this one has the staple inside, and then the cover was glued on, and that is more common. The numbering sequence is numbered here, 905, and it's numbered on the spine, 905. And inside, on the title page, it's marked P5. Again, I'm not going to get into the how they handled the numbering and the identifiers for these. It's actually very straightforward. It's well documented, but I'm not going to try to explain it in this video. But this is marked P5. And so this is one of the books that was reprinted. So P5 is the designator for the first printing of this book. They did reprint this one, and so it got a whole new number, number 905. So, is there anything else I want to say about this? Oh, the text on the back, they had a, a format. And again, I'm not a specialist in ACE. I've come to know a fair bit about it. But I'm by no means an expert in Armed Services Edition. But they all, but pretty much they all seem to have this red border with the stars. And then a lot of text in the middle talks about this particular book. And it's pretty much all the same. Now, when they made these, let me take these two again. These were printed on rotary presses, rotary magazine presses. They cost about six cents to produce. About six cents a book to make these. They printed these on high speed rotary magazine presses. They could print them fast. They could print them cheap. Um, and they, they did them in what's called two up. They would print two books. And not the same title. It would be two different books. Um, and when they printed these, it would come off the line as two books in one chunk, two up. And then you would cut it, and you would get two books. I have seen pictures of uncut two up, uh, which is pretty cool. They also printed these in four up. Where they would print four books on one press, and then three cuts and they would get the four books out of it. I've also seen pictures of a four up uncut. Four different four different titles. So pretty pretty darn cool. So I put those pictures in my image library. So the other book right here. Okay, the color scheme on this one, the color palette is orange with the red, little red graphic here, and a blue bar. Again, we have the black and white halftone of the original cover. And the back of this one on McSweeney's 26 
is promoting the Amanda Davis High Wire Fiction Award. I don't know if they do that award anymore or not. Um, if you're not familiar with Amanda Davis, I highly, uh, highly recommend Amanda Davis. So here is McSweeney's other effort into a, a little book in the vein of the Armed Services Edition. And here is the real thing, a genuine Armed Services Edition, Yankee from Olympus. The orange is a bit faded, but it's the same color, pat, color palette, orange, red, and blue. And they, had a, they had a number of color mixes. And from what I can see in in in, in my research, they 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 re, they had not an infinite number. They had the same palettes appear multiple times. Um, there's a wide variety of them. But there is some predictability. So I, when uh, I went looking for something similar to this to put with my collection. I was able to get pretty close. So, orange, red, light blue. This one's a little faded. Yankee from Olympus, Justice Holmes and His Family. It's a biography. And this one is P32. P32. And eventually, kind of in the middle of the run, the letter designation was dropped, and they stopped numbering them that way. And it was easier just to pick up from wherever they were, 697, 698. When they dropped the letter convention and started numbering, they just incremented the, incremented the number. When I started out, the A series, there were 30 titles, A1, A2, A3, A through 30. And that 30 books, that was the first run. That was the first block of books, A1 through A30. Then the next block of books was B, B1 through 30, which makes sense. It works. You understand it. Um, it's not quite as simple as 892, 893, which is probably part of why they stopped doing it that way, because it got to be a lot of books. Uh, the A series and the B series, obviously the first two, they weren't printed in the huge numbers that the later ones were. So if you find an A series, a B series book, pretty uncommon. Um, if you have an interest in armed services editions, that would be pretty desirable. The C series and the D series are known as the D-Day books. My understanding is that they reserved the C series and the D series and stashed them away because those were given to the troops went on the boats and went did the whole D-Day thing. So the C-Series and the D-Series are known as the D-Day books. Those are pretty desirable. There's not a lot of them out there. Um, so this is P-32, very early. So this is, well, not very early. This is like probably night number uh, 400 and if the no, if it, if it was converted into the number, it would be like 450, something like that. I could do the math. It's all it's all well known. So this would be like 450 or so. The back cover of this, very similar, almost exactly the same as uh, my other one. You can see this one is a different size. These oblong ones, they weren't all exactly the same size. You can see that this one is longer. It's about an inch longer.
and it's about a half an inch shorter. This one is interesting because it is the largest of the oblong books. The magazine presses were limited to 512 pages. That was the absolute maximum pages. And very few books were abridged. They did abridge some books. Almost all the books say, this is the complete book, not a digest. This is the complete book, not a digest. On most of the books, the bar at the bottom makes a point of saying you're getting the whole, it's small, but you're getting it all. Um, there were some abridged books, but not a lot. This one, they went to their maximum width, and they went to their maximum height, and they used all 512 pages. So this is the largest of the oblongs. So that's kind of kind of interesting. I did not know that at the time. I was buying it because I wanted something that was going to be kind of close to the McSweeney's effort to something that looked like a uh, armed services book. So it just turned out to be uh, a happy accident that it's uh, got some other interesting things about it also. Again, this is staple got a very big heavy duty staple this one has yeah will the webcam show it you can see the hole here this one has a wormhole uh, a bookworm i assume it's a wormhole or sorts i'm gonna call it a, a wormhole but yeah it looks like a it looks like a uh, a drill went in there and it goes about uh, oh half an inch maybe. So it's a perfect hole, about a half inch. So I could probably come up with um, some fanciful story about this wormhole in my Armed Services edition. So I thought it would be interesting for the McSweeney's take on Armed Services edition to learn a little bit about the real armed services editions and to get a couple and to see if I could get a couple that came pretty close to McSweeney's one. And McSweeney's was pretty true to the whole format, you know, the book, the color schemes. So I've rambled on for almost 25 minutes here. Hopefully. Some of it's fairly interesting. Have not read Lost Island. I will. I haven't yet. I bought it for the because the color was right, all the everything about it was right. So I bought it for that. And there we go. So that stuff all over here. Timothy McSweeney's Quarterly Concern, issue twenty-six. There you go.